When someone is shopping online, just looking at the Garmin Forerunner 945, and they see an option for that LTE variety, it'd be easy to mistakenly assume that these are the same watches, and that you just need to pay an extra 50 bucks if you want those LTE options. Here's what the website looks like. And to me, you know, I think it looks very confusing for the potential customer. The truth is, uh, these are very different watches. They don't actually have the same chipsets inside of them, and they're even different sizes on the outside. So in this video, we're gonna go over all the differences between the 945 and the 945 LTE. And I'll touch on the LTE features, but I probably wanna save those till the end of the video just because I kinda of wanna focus on those key differences that people aren't really considering when they're picking between these two devices. Garmin Forerunner 945 LTE has a suggested retail price of $650 and the older 945 at $600. So only $50 and I think maybe after listening to you know all the differences between these two watches, it might seem worth it just to actually go for the 945 LTE even if you have no intentions of using the LTE features. And you know, as a side note on price, you know, as I'm recording this, I'm seeing prices for the 945 at about 560 bucks on Amazon and the 945 LTE at about $615. But the prices are kind of changing all the time, so you kind of have to keep an eye on this stuff. Uh, but let's actually start with the actual watch body itself. The watch body of the 945 LTE, it's not the same size as the older 945. It's actually, you know, more similar to that 745 size and the weight of that smaller device. Uh, the 945 is 44 millimeters in width and 15 millimeters in depth. It weighs about 49 or 50 grams. For reference, you know, that 745 is 43 millimeters in diameter and has a depth of about 13 millimeters and weighs 47 grams. The older 945 is a bit wider, 46 and a half, and is the same depth, uh, 15 millimeters, and weighs about 52 grams. So 945 is about two grams less and about two or two and a half millimeters slimmer. But you know, when I'm wearing these watches and I've worn both of these a lot, uh, I don't really feel a difference in sizes between these watches. And in my opinion, it really comes down to like the depth of watches, you know, how thick they are and how high they sit up on your wrist. I think that's the real contributing factor to those watches that feel really big, that feel like they're hanging off your wrist. Uh, and so I don't think that you guys are gonna notice a huge difference in size and weight of these two watches. Now there are very noticeable differences between these two watches. Uh, if you flip the watches over, you notice right away that the 945 has like their newer optical heart rate monitor. They call it the Elevate 4.0 optical heart rate sensor. Uh, when I'm testing the two heart rate monitor sensors, uh, I personally don't see a huge difference between these two watches. Uh, in this case, uh, looking at the data here, uh, the 945 is in blue and the 945 LTE is in red. Uh, and in this case, uh, there's a third watch on here as well. It's the Coros Vertex 2, but that's attached to a heart rate strap. So that's kind of like our baseline. Uh, and this is kind of what you want to see when you're looking at heart rate data. Uh, all of these watches look really good to me. Uh, I don't have a problem with any of them, you know, whatsoever. Really good heart rate data that I'm seeing on both of these. Uh, your experience obviously, you know, might vary for, you know, a ton of different reasons. Uh, your skin tone might be different than my pasty white skin. Uh, you could have tattoos on your wrist. Uh, you know, you could have more bounce than I have. You know, um, I try to tighten the devices pretty tight uh, on both wrists, uh, on either arm, you know, so that I'm getting uh, pretty good data as I come across. Uh, but there's so many different reasons why you might have bad data from an optical heart rate monitor. Typically, I suggest chest heart rate straps, you know, if you want the best data. Uh, another difference, uh, and I think this is a small one, you know, I've read that the bezel is significantly smaller on the 945 LTE. I definitely don't think it's significantly smaller. Uh, I think maybe it's about a half a millimeter in difference between these two. So you get a half a millimeter of smaller bezel on the 945 LTE than the 945. Uh, another small difference, and I think this one's a little bit subjective. Uh, you may notice a little bit better blacks on the screen of the 945 LTE when compared to the 945. 
Now, one of the biggest difference, you know, of course, this is just my opinion, uh, between the 945 and the 945 LTE is the increased accuracy in GPS. The 945 LTE is definitely one of the most accurate GPS watches that I've tested on this channel. And the older 945, it was, it was not bad by any means. Uh, I just think that you're gonna end up with a little bit more accurate data if you're using the 945 LTE. Now, I really only think you're gonna notice this if you, you know, overlay data, which is, you know, what we're gonna do here. Uh, again, the 945 is in blue and the 945 LTE is in red. But if you look at this, you can tell that the 945 does keep kind of slipping off the trail, uh, going to the inside here, uh, away from the lake where I was. And I typically think of the 945 as, you know, Garmin's top of the line triathlon series watch. So uh, when it comes to, you know, swimming, biking and running, that GPS accuracy difference is really the only difference that you're gonna notice when it comes to those three sports. Otherwise, uh, these two watches, you know, whether you're swimming in a pool or a lake or just doing a triathlon race, they're gonna operate just the exact same way. Now, for a lot of people, they may prefer the 945 LTE just for that size. But uh, because the 945 LTE is smaller, um, one issue that I've noticed and could be a deal breaker for you is the fact that uh, Garmin typically makes this kind of quick release system for their you know, 900 series triathlon watches. Uh, the quick release system basically makes it easy for a triathlete to uh, take the watch quickly off their wrist and snap it onto uh, their handlebar systems as part of this quick release piece that they sell. And they typically sell it as part of their like triathlon bundle. Uh, but because of the different sizes of these two watches, the 945 LTE is not gonna work with that quick release system. So if you want that quick release system to work, you're gonna have to use the older 945. Another small difference, uh, and this is another you know, very small difference between these two watches, uh, the watch bands themselves. Um, the watch bands are pretty much identical. I don't think that you would really notice unless you took a close look, uh, but the 945 LTE has diagonal grooves and the 945 just has horizontal grooves. I mean, I, they're, they're basically the same. You're never gonna notice that. Uh, you'll never notice those differences. Uh, but uh, anecdotally, I have noticed about one to two extra days of battery life on the 945 LTE. That may just be due to the fact that the lithium ion battery is newer on this watch. Uh, the 945 is about two years old. It's been through a lot. I've done a lot of training with this watch uh, and it's held up well, um, but it may be starting to affect the battery life. Hard to say. And that's kind of comparing these watches, you know, not using those LTE features. If you do use the LTE features, uh, that will definitely put a significant strain on the battery life and you'll definitely get less battery life on the LTE watch than the older 945. And those LTE features, uh, I, I do think that they're pretty interesting. I just, I kind of feel like Garmin didn't go quite as far as I had wished with them. Uh, you can't, you know, make calls on these watches or send texts to people uh, like you might hope when you're buying a watch with LTE features. Uh, that being said, you know, Garmin has done something pretty amazing here. Uh, Garmin has kind of licensed their LTE piece so that they can actually be the ones that charge you monthly or yearly uh, with their own services. Uh, you don't necessarily buy a device and then go talk to Verizon and sign up for some sort of payment plan uh, or at t or something like that, like you would with an Apple Watch. Uh, and the pricing for the LTE services is pretty reasonable. It's $7 per month or $6 a month if you sign up for a year. But these LTE services are mostly geared around safety features and some very basic race communication with people. Uh, they have a feature called Live Track over LTE, so you can leave your watch at home uh, and your watch will create a real-time view of your location uh, during some sort of run or bike or something like that. Uh, so your friends and family can kind of follow along. Uh, they also have an LTE event sharing over LTE, uh, and that's kind of similar to Live Track, but it'll allow you to uh, send split information to friends and family during an event. So it'll provide kind of real time updates to your friends or whoever signed up for it uh, with times and lap splits. So, you know, someone might get a message saying that you just passed the mile marker uh, and your pace was eight minute or, you know, something like that. Uh, spectator messaging over LTE is pretty cool. Uh, so during one of those live event sharings, Garmin has this little web portal where spectators can actually send live messages to your watch. Uh, 
Maybe they'll tell you to like pick up the pace during the race, who knows? Uh, but both 945 and 945 LTE can do that incident detection, meaning that if you have a big crash on a bike or if you fall really hard, the watch can actually pick up on that jolt in motion and it can use your smartphone if it's connected uh, to message your emergency contacts. Now the 945 LTE doesn't actually have to have your smartphone connected. Uh, it can actually enable that message right from the watch itself in the LTE services. And that's the same thing that goes for that assistance service. Um, if for some reason you're not feeling safe, uh, you can just quickly select the assist button and you know, with the 945, it'll message your emergency contacts through your cell phone. With the 945 LTE, it'll do that over cellular services. And then similar to that, they have something called Assistance Plus. Uh, and it's just this way for you to actually send your name and your location to uh, the Garmin IERCC, which is, you know, it's basically this 24 hours a day, seven days a week, a staff professional emergency response coordination center. Uh, and they can uh, contact your emergency people and they can actually communicate with your local emergency services. Uh, so if you're in some sort of situation where um, you have some sort of bike crash or uh, mountain biking crash and you are within cellular range, uh, you could potentially get help that way. So it's possible that Garmin will continue to add features to their LTE services here. Uh, I think it's even more likely that they will add watches to these LTE options in the future. Uh, I could be wrong. Uh, I was very surprised that there wasn't an LTE option on the new Phoenix 7 watch that was just announced last week. Uh, I know that you know a lot of you guys want me to review that watch. I am trying to get a hold of one as soon as possible, but it sounds like it's gonna be a while. Uh, but hopefully this helps you figure out you know, all the subtle differences between the 945 LTE and the regular 945. Both of these watches are fantastic. Uh, they really are kind of my go-to watches and uh, I really, you know, I kind of constantly have one on my wrist when I'm not making videos about them. Uh, and I don't necessarily have a favorite between the two. I just kind of grab one of these and use them very, very regularly. Either way, be sure to get out there, uh, swim, bike, run, rinse, and then repeat it all over again. And we will see you guys on the next one.